And I've got to recommend Deb Hawk and I've been seeing her for three years now and it's marvellous. Mm. If I was looking for a life coach, I'd think three years, mm. something's not happening. If I'm looking for a life coach, I want someone to say, I saw them three times and I really felt back yes. on my feet. Because yeah. we haven't got unlimited money. And often the people who really need help are not your multimillionaires. Mm. They know what they're doing. Mm. It's people like you and I with limited resources. You but know? How, how does it work? If I came to see you, do I just begin talking and <clears throat> tell you my problems? And Absolutely. You just tell me why you're there. Because, of course, life coaching is very different from psychic work. Yeah. If someone came to us for a psychic reading, we would say, don't talk, don't say a word, just let me get the cards out or let me tune into you and let me tell you what I'm getting. Yeah. But life coaching, yes, you just say, what brought you here? Why do you feel you've come? Mm. And, and gradually you'll hear the questions you've got to ask people. Mm. You know, so stop for a minute. You've just been talking about your relationship as if you're very happy, but in the other breath you're telling me you're thinking of leaving. So can mm. we just talk about this confusion a bit? Yeah. And, and I don't often find people really do need to end a relationship. What they need to do is go back and communicate with their partner mm. and get things changing. They don't realise that any long-term relationship is going to go into the doldrums every so often. So do you get people yeah. coming with marriage problems, um, maybe not the physical pain so much, but emotional, uh, depression? It, uh, it's, it sounds a little bit blasé, but it's normally, I have package. hit a brick wall. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing's working for me, nothing feels right. I hate my weight, my hair, my job. Mm. I don't hate my partner, but we've lost relativity with each other. He works, I work, mm. the kids need us, the house wants cleaning, we no romance is left anymore. Right. Everything else is piled in on top of us. You know, I, I, there's, uh, I've got friends that are turning their back on me or stabbing me in the back. Mm. I found out that one person said this to someone else. And it seems as if people just go smack into a brick wall and fall backwards and go, I don't know what to do. Mm. You know, and one of my clients has gone from being in the legal profession to being a swimming instructor, who hopefully, please God, mm. will be helping to coach the team for the Rio Olympics. Oh, she's yeah. got, there is an opportunity yeah. where she's working that she could go that far. Mm. And, uh, but she found that by being listened to. Mm. I know I talk a lot on things like this, mm. but listening, hearing, but then trying to come up with action you know, life doesn't change by talking. You can talk till the cows come home. Mm. But you've got to find out what that person wants to do, mm. where they want to start. And it's often when you work with them, it isn't where they thought they wanted to start. But let's talk about Deb Hawking. Where, where does Deb want to be? Where do you want to be in a couple of years' time? Helping people, and as many people as possible. Mm. I'm personally more comfortable with having 100 people in a room at £10 than one person in a room at a lot more. Yeah. I'd love to, to walk in and offer and go. I, I think sometimes when you want to come and see a psychic and a medium, who are you seeing? If you want to see a life coach, who are you seeing? Mm. If I can get out in front of big audiences, then people can know whether they would like to come and see me or not, whether they would like help from me. But I've also found that sometimes you'll go to a whole evening and somebody will say one sentence, not even a medium, a chat at an evening meal, and someone will say one thing and your life just changed. Yeah, sure. And so sometimes I don't feel people always need in-depth help. I think it's wrong to say to them, oh, you need to go and see someone, your life's in a pit. Sometimes they need one sentence, or in my case, what changed my life, another thing that was very much a defining moment, was four sentences spoken by Barry Manilow. Really? Yeah. Yeah, not something I would ever have expected. I didn't expect to hear his name on my city either on my sofa <laughs> yeah. okay but, shall I say it again no <laughs> don't you dare no. <laughs> the man is awesome as a person is he yes and whenever I've been to one of his shows he always spends time trying to inspire his audience to go out and chase their dreams mm. I've never seen him not do that are he you chasing your dreams Deb oh god yeah you are I, I love my life and I love my work and it's just the biggest privilege to work with people. I've, I'm, I, I know, you know, the cynics will tell you, well, everybody's out there to cheat, lie, steal, mm. do you down. It's rubbish. People mm. are amazing. Mm. And most of the times they're not amazing is when they're in trouble, when they're unhappy. Mm. You don't get light shining out of a person who feels desperate or dead or lost. And yet, because of spiritual thinking, the truth is you're very rarely that way. The light is just mm. there. You just, 
in a poem I wrote called The Caves of Ismeron, it says, and this was channeled from the spirit world, the light that you're seeking has never been seen, mm. but it is where you are and it was where you've been. Mm. You're the light. Yeah, but we've got it the whole time. It's like yeah. we just don't realise we've got it, do we? Exactly. And it takes someone like you or Barry Manilow. Yeah, or to, a medium. To, medium to bring out that light. What do mediums try to do? Mm. With every message they give, they try to give some inspiration. Mm. They don't go, yes, love, you're in a hole and your mother tells me there's no way you're ever getting out of it, so get a spade and bury yourself. Mm. They don't. They'll say like you did in that message. Mm. Do what you know to be right. You had no idea what you were talking about. Mm. You told me, you just looked at a man in the audience, gave him his evidence and said the message is do what you know to be right. Mm. Now that might sound bland, but to that man, it changed his life in exactly. that moment. Because the message from the spirit world was designed to help. Let's mention your website. What, what's the address your um, website? But of course, yeah. Hawkin is a name I can't even pronounce. It's K-E-N at the end. It's not Hawkin or Hawkins, it's Hawken. So or, I say or, we're Ken and Barbie. Or contact us here at Felix Tow TV and ask for Deb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot on your website. You you're, you do a lot of writing as <clears throat> well, don't you, for magazines? I haven't got all my writing up yet, but yeah, I did. I'm not doing so much writing for does magazines. That, does that become, or when you did, was that inspirational as well? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. It just, it comes together. I sometimes get slapped for saying that I don't feel I can take a lot of credit for my work, but there's stuff out there that's amazing, and sometimes when I know I'm being amazing, when I can actually hear, because I go deaf sometimes when I work, I can't hear my audience at all. Mm. But sometimes when I can, even what's coming out of my mouth, I'm thinking, God, I must remember that. That's incredible. Yeah. And I'm, I'm as blown away by, as the audience are sometimes by what I'm hearing. What, mm. what my guide comes through with sometimes is just incredible because it's so gentle and it's so simple while we're rushing around complicating he'll go why don't you do that and you think you know god yes that is so obvious have you, you got know? time for hobbies i don't suppose you have have hobbies. you um tony and i do quite a lot of keep fair i do zumba and i find i do feel a lot better for doing a physical hour of aerobics at least a week we go yeah. to the gym um, we've got six cats, that keeps me very, very busy. You know, sometimes when people say, oh, it must be fabulous to be a medium, what always jumps into my mind is me down on my hands and knees with the two litter trays with my kitten, Hito, who's a huge kitten, stood on my back doing that. Because yeah. what he really wants me to do is when you get up and do my food. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, but they keep us very, very busy. We've got a house that keeps us busy, but I love being out and, yeah. you know. And, and meeting people and helping. Are just people. I like meeting people. You know, I've got loads of lovely friends, and I love the seaside. And I just, I you know, decorate or go out. I've grabbed a, a sandwich. I'm gone. I'll tell you what. It's been lovely meeting you again, Deb. Again. Yeah. And we're, we're at Felix, so we've got the beach. We can go and have a walk. I will indeed. The coast. And thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Bob. It's lovely to see lovely. you again. And that's it for Eternal Spirit today. Goodbye and God bless. <laughs>